slavery was illegal in both places. Scott said this meant he was now free. The court decided against him. They said if a slave had been bought legally, he was still a slave no matter where he was. In explaining their decision, one of the justices wrote that black people had no rights which the white man was bound to respect. Refusing to be discouraged, Lincoln challenged Douglas for his seat in the Senate. The Illinois Republicans nominated him unanimously. His acceptance speech was based on a quotation from the Bible. The phrase became one of his favorites. A house divided against itself cannot stand. The United States, he said, could not continue as half free and half slave. Either slavery would end, or it would take over the whole country. Or the country would be destroyed. Chapter 5 Mr. President Once again, Lincoln asked Douglas to debate him. This time, Douglas had to accept. In 1858, seven debates were held in different towns all over Illinois. The main issue was slavery. People poured in from neighboring states to listen. The whole country followed the Lincoln-Douglas debates in the newspapers. Reporters wrote down every word each man said. Lincoln and Douglas made comical opponents. Douglas was short, round, and dignified. His nickname was the Little Giant because he dressed elegantly and had a rich, deep voice. Lincoln was tall, thin, and awkward. He still dressed like a farmer and had a high, thin voice. Douglas traveled to the debates in a private carriage. Lincoln rode the train with everyone else, joking and chatting. But both men were very skilled speakers. People disagreed about who had won the debates, and Lincoln lost the Senate election again. But he had become famous. He was invited to lecture on slavery in New York City. He won over the huge crowd with his passion and simple, logical arguments. This was his first public appearance on the East Coast, the center of political power in the United States. While Lincoln was making a name for himself, the country was moving toward a crisis. States in the South talked about leaving the United States to form their own country. President Buchanan was a weak leader who didn't know how to control the South. He couldn't even keep the support of his own party. In 1860, the Democratic Party could not agree on whom to support for president. They were split between Stephen Douglas and another candidate. The Republican Party chose Lincoln as their candidate for president. They called him the rail candidate because he had split rails as a boy. The name told people that he was an ordinary, hard-working man just like them. He did very little campaigning. He didn't really expect to win. On the night of the election, Lincoln and his fellow Republicans crowded into the state capitol. News about the election kept coming in by telegraph. At 2 a.m., the result was certain. Because the Democratic Party was divided between two candidates, Lincoln had won more votes than any other candidate. Mary was thrilled. She had always wanted to be the wife of a president. But Lincoln could not sleep. I then felt as I never had before the responsibility that was upon me, he said. He was an unlikely president. He'd had only one year of school. He had almost no experience in national government. He was not a war hero. He'd spent his whole life in pioneer towns. He'd been defeated every time he ran for the Senate. He didn't even know exactly what a president did. And now, suddenly, he was the 16th president of the United States. During the campaign, an 11-year-old girl named Grace Bedell had written to him, 
She said she thought he'd look more like a president if he had a beard. So now he grew one. Chapter 6 Civil War Lincoln was in trouble before he even took office. The slave states hated him. Almost no one in the South had voted for him. As soon as the news came of his election, seven states seceded from the Union. They said they were no longer part of the United States. Lincoln was not their president. Soon, four more states joined them. They called their new country the Confederate States of America. They elected Jefferson Davis as their president. In his brief inauguration speech, Lincoln spoke to a huge crowd gathered in front of the Capitol. He told them he would not let the nation become two countries, no matter what. He avoided talking about slavery. He had a good reason for this. Four states where slavery was legal, Delaware, Maryland, Kentucky, and Missouri, had not left the Union. Lincoln didn't want to anger these states and lose them, too. But despite Lincoln's wishes, the country was soon torn in two. A month later, on April 12, 1861, Southern soldiers fired on Union soldiers at Fort Sumter in South Carolina. The Civil War had begun. More than 80 years earlier, the American colonies North and South had united to break away from England and become a new country. Now, Americans would be fighting Americans. Families were divided, even Lincoln's own family. His wife, Mary, had relatives in the South who owned slaves. They fought on the other side. Lincoln had no trouble getting volunteers for the army. People in the North supported the war, and everyone thought it would be over soon. Lincoln believed that to fight a war, the president needed more power than in peacetime. There are some...